So a year ago, my computer died and it was gonna cost more to repair it than it was actually worth because, you know, Apple. I didn't have enough funds to be able to purchase the laptop that would be specced out enough to future-proof me for the next three or four years with the work that I do. So I decided to pick up the iPad M2 Pro as sort of a stopgap. And I am so glad that this is gonna be my last week using this iPad as my one and only. What's up, my name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mostly shoot portraits, events, weddings, stuff like that. If there's a person in the photo, I'm gonna take it. On the video side, I do a lot of stuff for YouTube. I edit stuff for other YouTubers. I do reels, I do short form stuff, and I'm also working on a documentary of my own. So my main use case for a computer or an iPad is large catalogs of photos that I'm editing and delivering to clients. Some pretty heavy editing from time to time when I'm working on the documentary or on certain types of videos for YouTube and short social reels, YouTube editing, all that kind of stuff. I don't play any games aside from playing Among Us with our seven-year-old and I don't do anything else that requires a kind of heavy GPU. So if that's what I do and this is such a capable iPad, why am I so excited to change? Before we get into all the reasons why I'm stoked on moving away from this, I wanna give credit where credit's due and, and I just wanna quickly talk about some of the things that are really great about using an iPad as your one and only. But the biggest thing is the price. For what this accomplishes, it is an incredibly powerful machine and like 90% of people, this would be more than enough for every single thing that they do. Number two is form factor and touch sensitivity. I actually really like using the iPad for certain types of things. Being able to switch between certain things is very, very helpful when you're on an iPad in a way that I find is a little bit slower on a laptop. The other thing is the Apple Pencil and I really, really love photo editing on an iPad using the Apple Pencil. It's such a nice experience. Unfortunately, I would say like the editing programs don't really give you everything you need to make it as robust enough. But if I'm just doing some like good basic editing on some portraits or something, I love this interface. It's so nice to just like pick it up, take it with you, go sit in a cafe and edit some portraits. And that brings us to number three, which is portability. It is incredibly easy to just, you know, pull this up, throw it into my bag, and then go to a cafe, work on some photo editing, do some research, you know, open up good notes, make notes for YouTube videos, whatever I need to do. When it comes to like those simple tasks, this is so nice and not having to bring a full laptop with me is really convenient. So that's the good, but like I said, there's there's bad, or there's bad for me. Your experience might vary. This could be perfect for you, but here's the things that I've been struggling with over this past year and why I kind of reached a breaking point and just decided I needed to invest in a new laptop. Number one, let's talk about accessories. And the first thing is that you only have one port, one port to rule them all on this bad boy. And that means that you always need a dongle. And you need a dongle that can do a lot of different things because if you only have one port, you need to do everything. Like I need to be able to plug in an SD card as well as an SSD, as well as headphones, as well as add like a power supply. Sometimes, you know, you might want to connect directly to ethernet. Maybe you have a micro SD card. Maybe you have a USB A and a USB C type reader that you need to use. So like you need a dongle that can do everything and they do make them and I, and I have one and it's good and it's, it's served me well, but like I cannot leave the house with this thing if I want to do anything serious without bringing a dongle at very, very least, as well as like my I might need to plug it into. And the problem too is that there's no eject button. So like when you add an SD or an SSD to the system, there's no way to eject it. And Apple seems to think this isn't a problem, but I have had corruption of files, corruption of SSDs, nothing I couldn't repair and figure out, but it's happened a bunch of times and it's super frustrating because even if you think that the SSD is no longer doing anything, so it's safe to pull it out, you never know. And uh, it's, it's just really frustrating and, and it has caused issues. Also to make this actually functional for me and for a lot of others, you need a keyboard, you need a mouse, you need the Apple Pencil, you need a cover for it, you need a stand. Like these are all, you could call them like quality of life things where like it makes it better. But to me, it's like, it's a non-starter. I can't do everything on the iPad itself. I need to be able to have the keyboard and the mouse. All these accessories are available and they're, they're easy to find. But the problem is all of a sudden you're creeping up towards like the price of a laptop when you're buying all these things. So it just gets to the point where it's like with a laptop, you don't need most of those accessories. So I don't know, it, it, it feels like it's, it's, 
not really worth the price at that point. The second big con I would say is just the overall computing power. Now this is the base model of the iPad. It can handle basic edits. I can do a 4K timeline in it, no problem with video editing, and I can cut through it. It does have a lot of power, but as soon as I start stacking multiple clips, uh, if I'm adding in a lot of stuff, if I'm doing some motion graphic stuff, if I am adding in titles and transitions and music and everything, it really starts to bog down and get quite slow. And then all of a sudden I'm dealing with something that is like, that's just really frustrating experience. Like I have to just like close the app, let the iPad cool down because this iPad gets freaking hot. Stupid cornballing piece of And then once it's cooled down enough, I open up the, uh, the program again and I can edit again. But then it hits a point where it like overheats, it slows down, it bogs down, and I have to do the same thing. Or it just stalls out in the same area over and over and over. So I have to remove that, export the entire thing, and then put it back in as a fresh timeline just to add that one little thing, which is something I've had to do a couple times. There's ways to optimize, but it just, it's just clunky and frustrating. Yes, if I up the RAM and if I up the storage, I would be able to probably get around a lot of this. But again, then you're just creeping into that territory of laptop pricing and why not just get the laptop? Number three, I'm calling the clunk. It's a clunky interface. If, if you wanna have multiple windows open, if you wanna dive into like the whole finder versus files debate, if you wanna work on different things at the same time, you're gonna be frustrated. Now, if you just wanna do one task at a time, great, easy. But the second you start adding more stuff to your workflow, you're, you're gonna be annoyed. The amount of times that I have been rendering out a video file, and then I wanted to check like my email or open up something else, the iPad itself can handle that. It's not like it can't handle having multiple things open, but there's a certain way you have to do it. You basically have to go and find the app and open it after you have made the screen of the app you're using smaller so that there's room for that app to open up and to move the app you're using to the side. Otherwise, it can just completely cancel out the render that you're doing. This doesn't happen with all the programs, but with DaVinci it's happened a few times, with LumaFusion it happens. And it, it's a me problem. I have to remember to make to minimize the screen a little bit, then open up the new program. If it's not something I can actively remember to do every time, then I'm gonna run into situations like, like I have in the past where I've let this whole thing render out for 15 minutes and then in the last two minutes I go to do something and I can't or I go ahead and open it and then my whole render is screwed. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. I'm annoyed by that. I, I find it dumb. It's dumb. Number four, the big con. I know I talked about apps as a positive and they are overall, but I would say app functionality and the sort of like robustness of the apps is just not there. So like for Lightroom, for example, there's subject masks, but there's not the AI subject mask where I can like mask out just the face, just the hair, just the clothing. That would be really helpful. It would save my workflow and speed things up. Yes, I could do it with just like a brush really slowly, but it's just a pain. And there's, there's always workarounds, but I don't wanna have to constantly work around stuff over and over. I just want things to work the way that I know that they work on the desktop version and they just don't with the iPad. And I understand, like, I'm not saying that they definitely should, but that does make me think, well, why would I choose this over a laptop long term? So all that being said, who is an iPad only setup for? I would say it's for a few different types of people. If you're only doing like daily tasks and you just want something really simple and easy and honestly fun to use, an iPad is perfect. If you're checking email and watching YouTube videos and you know browsing the web, I sound like a million years old. But if you're doing all that basic stuff, it's perfect. This is a, a great option for you. Uh, number two, I would say is people who travel a ton. If you are always traveling and you're worried about having a super expensive laptop with you that could potentially get stolen or get broken or whatever, this is a great solution. You can do a lot of what you need to do on this and it would be totally fine to get you through a week away or something like that. Number three, the third person I think is good for is dads who want a really big thing that has a mediocre camera to take photos at the zoo or uh, I don't know, walking downtown or something. We've all seen them, they love it. This was for you, dads. So what am I switching to? I just picked up an M3 MacBook Pro. It's the 18 gigabyte version with one terabyte storage. I got it refurbished through Apple. 
I am getting it today, which is pretty exciting. So if you want to know more about that, I guess leave a comment and maybe I'll talk about it sometime. So then what about this bad beast of a thing? What is this just going to sit on the shelf? Is it going to be relegated to uh, the land of misfit toys or something? I think ultimately this will be like a great thing for me to have in, in two scenarios. Number one being like coffee shop hangouts. If I want to go to a cafe, work on some photos and just kind of hang out and, and relax and, and not be too bogged down by having all this stuff with me, this would be a great option. I can send those photos over to the iPad. I can work on them. And for most of the editing I do, they, they, they should be fine. I mean, there's nothing I'm doing that's so crazy that the iPad can't handle it when it comes to photo editing. Number two is social media editing. I actually have grown to really love using LumaFusion. It's like one of my favorite apps I've ever used for video editing. It's, it's very fast and responsive and easy to use and really fun on the iPad interface. It's lacking a lot of stuff and I think you can get a number of presets for it to, to help out, but I don't think it is like an ideal solution for heavy edits, but if I'm doing social media stuff like reels and stuff for clients, it is so good for that. And I could basically just take this dongle and my SSD or even just the SSD if I have enough battery power and I can burn through uh, editing some reels for, for clients on the go and that's great. I'm not a dad dad, like we have a seven year old, but he's my partner's son. Like call me what you will, but I still think I'll eventually get to the point where I'm taking photos on it, right? I've only done it once and it felt so funny. Why are you doing that, dads? It's insane. So how many of you are working on an iPad only setup? Does my experience resonate with you? There's way more we could go into. And I did make another video in the past all about my like editing workflow and, and my issues with editing on an iPad. And you can watch that, I'll leave the link here. Uh, so, but this is sort of my like, I guess, goodbye to the iPad. Here's why I'm switching. How about you? What, what What's your take? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go now because I, I have to film B-roll, I guess. So, bye.